Welcome to beautiful Colombia, currently in Medellin. Now, since I've been here, I've made it my sole purpose to engage with the locals and learn as much about the rich history and culture of this country. This is a story of how I was chilling with some friends and my boy Pablo literally told me he knew Roberto Escobar. I'm like, nah, you lying. He said, I right, bet, we're gonna pull up. I was like, all right, let's do it. Just a quick disclaimer that I am in no way, shape or form idolizing or glorifying any drug or criminal activity, but this was just a spontaneous and enlightening experience where I got to meet, you know, the brother of one of the most infamous drug lords ever. Not exactly knowing what to expect, we made a quick detour and we pulled up on an undisclosed location. And here's how it went. Palms Avenue. Robert Escobar, he's waiting on us now. Who are you going to see? Robert Escobar. This is Pablo Escobar's brother. Okay. Uh, we get, you know, all the facts here. There's a nephew that, you know, he just runs his mouth. A lot of lies, a lot of controversy. Uh, but Robert Escobar, you know, I'm the only one that's gone to the cathedral with him. So I got a lot of information that most tour guides don't have. Um, he feeds us a lot of information too. If you want to look forward, we're about to pull up on the, on the entrance now. You can recognize it by uh, this big like carousel wheel on uh, the right. Okay. question for you though so some people think that the cops got Pablo and some believe that he you know shot himself oh, what do you think I, I think whoever believes the cops got him is plain old stupid right because he always said it he prefers a tomb than a cell right. and when you got search brigades from you know every forces out there including mm -hmm. international forces that came and helped you know DEA, FBI, whatever even CIA uh, you know they all got guns AK-47s all kinds of assault rifles you don't keep a nine millimeter to go head to toe or head to head with you know AK-47s you keep that right. on yourself for making sure you live up to your word Right. So that's my personal opinion, and I think it's pretty much common sense. I agree. Escobar. I agree. Okay. Gavin Gaviria. This is Hacienda Napoles. Maybe one time you guys have more time because that's like four hours away. Okay. Uh, you know, but that's huge, man. That's like I say, it's gonna end up being like a uh, like uh, Colombia's Walt Disney. <laughs> okay. Because they're making water parks there. They got two water parks there uh -huh. now. Come on. Somos cuatro. Gracias. See, then we ask how many people before. Uh, we should have got up to two. Got the gate with the secretary not playing no game. <laughs> that we were supposed to go see out there. What's up, Mike? Papa. 
¿Todo bien? Dale, sí. Yo lo pongo aquí a espalda. So it's safe to say that I'm never gonna doubt my homie Pablo again as he's heavily plugged up and connected in Colombia. So as we approach the property, there were barbed wires, security scanners, all types of preventative measures on some really James Bond type shit. Obviously, as we entered, we were greeted by Roberto Escobar's security staff and his wife. You could even see visible bullet holes throughout the property. And we were told by his wife that we could only film certain things for obvious reasons. That being said, years later, there are some decorations that they brought into the house. But everywhere that you looked, there were secret passageways. I mean, bookshelves that converted into ways to escape in the event of an attack. I mean, this is real life on some Scooby-Doo type shit. <laughs> you can't make this up. Now to the right of me is just some of their bulletproof vehicles. Mind you, this is just one estate. Pablo had multiple estates. And so this is just one of their estates with some of their bulletproof vehicles. And it was bulletproof and bombproof actually, down to the tire. I mean, you hit the tire, the tire felt like a brick. It was crazy. All around the property, you was reminded that Pablo always had security around him. From a watchtower, to just barbed wires, to bars, to holes, to just different high points on the property where guards could stand to watch over to see who was coming in. I mean, you could really feel the energy. This is the actual couch that has been in this house since the 70s that Pablo and all his family and all his cartel members would actually sit down on. It's been there ever since, as you can see by the wear and tear. Now remember how I said that you could just feel the energy as soon as you walk in the house? You can still see bullet holes of when attempts of murder were done on Pablo and his family. People actually tried to run up in the crib and started dumping, and somehow he always escaped. Right here is just one of the ways that Pablo and his cartel would smuggle in money or drugs. He always had different compartments and desks or other types of furniture or even toys, you know, that he could just stuff drugs in. And this was a desk that was literally his that is still at the crib right now until this day. Now these words came from Roberto himself. He said that this is the last chair that his brother Pablo sat in before he was killed. So you know I had to get a picture of that. So this was a wanted sign, and just look at the offering, 10 million dollars. Remember, this is back in the 80s and 90s, not to mention the conversion into pesos. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that Pablo Escobar was a very short man, and his family is very short. You know, they're, they're a family of very small people. But at this point, I know what you're thinking, you're saying Dudley. I get that you got to go to the crib, but where is Roberto? Are you capping? Nah, I'm gonna show you right now. I actually was chilling with Pablo Escobar's brother. It was just off camera. Yeah. Okay, so if you guys have like, if you guys have any questions, you can call so something else that a lot of people don't know is that Roberto Escobar is actually partially blind. While in jail, the cartel sent him a bomb in a box and the, the prison guards knew about it, but they took the box outside into the open yard and then told him that he had a gift, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so they told him to go out in the yard to open a gift, which already raised some red flags for him. 
So what he did was he started walking out to the yard, but he felt kind of weird about it and, and uneasy as he should. But by that time, the bomb already exploded, taking some of his vision away. So family, this is the day that I got to chill with Roberto Escobar. Obviously, certain conversations were had off camera for many different reasons. As you can imagine, there were certain things that I couldn't even post. Um, I did take other photos, but some things I choose to honor my word and not post certain things. The family did say that I could take photos in the house and around the house and also with him as well. Obviously, like I said, there were conversations that were had off the camera and he came off to me as a very respectful and wise man, obviously at his age and everything that he's been through. But yeah, this was just another day in Colombia. Hi, Ms. Wilson Story. Hi, yes, sir. All right, so Robert Escobar was convicted. Uh, so he was in prison 14 years, right? And while he was in prison, one day he comes back from church and they tell him he has a package, but to go receive it in the yard. So he found it strange, but he still went and got it from the yard, right? So when he's going to open it, boom, it was a letter bomb. So, you know, how do you get a letter bomb into prison? To me, it's plain and clear. Receive it in the yard. Who told him that? The guard. So, oh, of course. Like them, no, how you how are you gonna get a letter bomb in, in the, the yard? And in the yard. Yeah. So you know they they expected him to die and he didn't. He survived. And what's his name again? Robert Escobar. Roberto Gaviria. Gaviria. Mm -hmm. Wow. I didn't know he's blind, but I saw him. Yes, and, and, and blind, moving. and blind. He's blind and deaf. And, and deaf. deaf. Yeah, yeah he, like he hears very little. He has a like a hearing, a hearing aid. aid. Mm -hmm. All right. I saw her grab his hand and move it to uh to put it on the picture, and I was wondering. I thought it was just because he was a little older. I didn't know he was blind. No, no, he's nah. blind. Oh, that's I seen his eyes. Yeah. I yeah. didn't see his eyes. I didn't look at his eyes. That's why he like always wears a hat too. I guess you know he feels bad about it, right? He always got to put eye drops. He's always putting eye drops. And bro, I got a good relationship with him. Man. I got a good friendship with him. And we business partners. I mean, I got exclusive rights to Pablo Escobar's last hideout. Not where he died. Where he was at five days before he died. And again, I think whoever believes the police killed him is nah. total ignorance because you know, you don't keep a nine millimeter to go head to head with people with nothing but AKs. You know, you got search brigades from tell you the most e elite forces, you know, including DEA, CIA, mm -hmm. you know, you're not, you, you don't keep a nine millimeter for that. Right. So to me, I, I think common sense goes a long way. <laughs> I have the time for it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. I don't even pay attention to the videos he sends me. Oh, he sends you videos? Yeah, he sends me videos and, and you know, uh, audios explaining and giving information and shit. Ah, oh, man, well, we, we, we need to archive that and create a whole situation over that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we could do that. Because yeah. I'll have all How those files on my phone. How old is he? He's like 72 or something like that. That's looking young nowadays, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. He's so, people living to like 98. Yeah, but not living a lifestyle like that. I think he's from 49 or yeah. 46. I'm, I'm not sure. sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But I could find out. You know, I could. Yeah. You know, I had the opportunity to go with him to the cathedral. The cathedral is the prison that they Pop built for themselves. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I went with him. You know, he hasn't been out there with nobody. The first time he went. That's dangerous. Yeah, the, it, the water. The water pushed it out. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. They didn't get that. In the Dominican Republic, they would have took that bomb and sold it. That metal? <laughs> yeah. in, in Las Terrenas, there's a lot of potholes with nothing covering because they take the metal off. Yeah, yeah. That but, you know, they, they might say it's Pablo Escobar's, but it could have been somebody else. Okay. There was, okay. there's, there's a lot of drug lords as big as him. What you said, Mas? Just he was in the line. Not, not just that they, they found, uh, they were finding, you know, stashes of his cash. Because remember, when his but finance his accounting guy when he got popped he had the gps and he had all those coordinates remember yeah so he lost some bread uh, that he was hiding yeah i mean of course something's gonna get lost for sure yeah while i was working with him one day he received the call being with me you remember there was there's, there's a picture there like with little diamond type things that uh would they got him next to the the godfather yeah I saw that. yeah 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 
that got found when I was doing business with him. They called him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they called him and told him they found the stash. And, you know, so he went out to receive it. And that's what they had. That That's what was in there. It's wild. Wow. <laughs> it's wild. Mm -hmm. That property was ducked off too, man. You would have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's, now this is double lane road. This used to be a single lane road. Wow. This used to be like very full of trees and you you know, this was yeah this this now is is developed. This you wasn't would, developed yeah. before. You would have no idea, man. Up yep. the hill, gate, security, barbed wire all throughout the property. I mean all throughout the property. Broken glass on top of the, the brick wall around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's bullet holes everywhere. Yeah, that's because they tried to kill him when he got out of prison. Yeah. There's bullet holes all throughout the crib. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's wow, he never patched none of them bullet holes up. Because he's leaving it for memories. That's yeah, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yes, he's, well, they don't live in that house. He, he, he I mean, coming up off of all of that. He oh, so he lived, that's not where he lives right now? Yeah, that's where he lives. Oh, they lived there? Oh, right. He lived there, yeah. Oh, shit. Wow, just too yeah. Nah. Nah, nah, he lives there. No, like, he's hey. right in the middle of Hope Island. Like, We're close to Gaia DA's. Just, just like, right here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they had holes in the wall, like, Secret doors and passageways. Like, <laughs> he had a book in there that he wrote in. Hey. Yeah, he got a book. He, he the King of Kings. Out. They stole that book. They stole that book and published it in the U.S. as King of Kings. So and they're calling him their accountant. So you said that his bulletproof truck let out smoke, jacks, and like nails and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, oil, uh, oil, smoke, and nails. Oh, some Mario Kart shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, some James Bond shit, bro. Straight Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. left right here. That's, this is that's what he did. Banana pills. Banana pills. <laughs> 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 and he did that, you know, because he's an elect electrical engineer. So he just, you know, yeah. he wanted to show out, show what he could do, and he did it. Nah, that's dope. Take a look. All you need now is the Yoshi. <laughs> That concludes today's video, guys. I filmed this video over two years ago when I first arrived at Colombia. I didn't speak the language, nor did I know anything about the culture or the actual people of this great country. So after living here for some time, connecting with the people and learning way more, I felt comfortable sharing this piece of content that I've been sitting on. De nuevo, solo quiero decir que no se glorificando a Pablo Escobar y sus acciones, sino que queremos traer y contar un poco de la historia a la gente y hablar un poco de todo lo que ha pasado aquí en Colombia de Pablo Escobar. So that's the video, guys. Make sure to hit a like, subscribe. I really hope you enjoyed this educational video and this insight and experience that I had. And there's really nothing much to say, man. It's such a blessing to be able to go to these countries and learn about the history. This one is definitely one for the books. Peace. Peace.